see on here this is a pine tree with a little bit of damage and on there is a, a nice wound which has run and left all this pine sap on the outside and you can use this for various things you can make pine pitch glue by mixing it melting it over a fire mixing it with charcoal and like deer droppings or you could use it for fire lighting crumble it up make a dust and drop a spark in there you get a fire going uh, a fire accelerator so if you've already got a flame you just add some twigs covered in this and it will really burn nice and hot and it's also antiseptic it's got antiseptic properties so put a bit of this on a cut and it, it will help the healing process and cleaning that wound so many uses can't list them all here but yeah pine tree is an incredibly useful tree incredibly interesting tree and um, yeah during the second world war they would even eat the cambium layer of these trees uh, and use it to pad out their rations uh, so yeah really fascinating you can use the needles for tea so much stuff you can you can do so yeah scots pine uh, or a lot of the different pines actually you find in the uk have these uses and one to definitely keep an eye out for so here you can see on this little stump we've got a uh, pine cone which has been absolutely shredded and you can see all the the scales which have been pulled off and that squirrel's trying to get to the pine nuts within. So this is like a mitten mound, but for squirrels. We just had a little feast on here. Nice aspect, you can see like 360. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Pretty much. Even up there, it's like good view. Yeah. Really nice. I might dump my bag here and then we can have a little look. Yeah, we? let's have a little explore. Yeah. It's always better to do it when you're not <laughs> dragging weight. <laughs> when you're not panting. <laughs> That's it. Oh, that was a good walk though. It was a good walk. It's always good if you have hiked into a location, just find the general area you want to be and then dump your kit off and you can make a more sound cool when you're not blowing out of your ears yeah <laughs> that's good advice from Tom there oh, I'm definitely blowing out my ears <laughs> oh. well we got here it's it good is. good to be back with you Tom absolutely oh. good to be back with you man yeah lovely spot lovely let's have a walk yeah dude 
So hey guys, as you've seen, I'm out with Liam, Primal Nomad. Howdy. And we've just sort of scouted a location to spend the night. We're doing an overnight here in this woods, packing up, and then we're gonna film a separate video with a special guest. So yeah, we've picked this lovely spot. We're in a pine woodland. And as you can see, it is gorgeous. <laughs> and it's really flat. It's a bit like a field underfoot, like proper grass really nice so we're going to pull a turf up for the fire so we can leave no trace and yeah we're going to have lavus and a tarp and yeah build a little home out here for a night yeah. i do hope you guys enjoy this video please do go and check out liam's channel primal nomad bushcraft link in the description and i do hope you'll enjoy this little adventure Okay. 
Okay guys, so that's me and Liam set up. We've both got our lavus. We've set them up slightly differently, but yeah, we've got a nice opening. We weren't sure whether it was uh, sort of sleeve in or sleeve out. Yeah. So Liam, what have we done? I've gone for flaps in and Tom's gone for flaps out. Um, it's kind of an age old debate between the VU owners. So uh, yeah, it'd be good to see if there's a difference. I don't think there is, because I'm pretty sure I've used it both ways. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like Tom said, one of us is right, one of us is wrong, but I think uh, both setups are great. It's going to be so cozy. Absolutely, dude. I think it's a really nice setup. Have a nice fire in front and yeah, yeah. cozy. Really awesome. <laughs> So as a ground sheet, I'm actually favouring military style ponchos at the moment. Um, so this is just a Miltec poncho. And yeah, it's a really nice little like real tree camo pattern. Um, and yeah, Liam's showed in his video a really cool trick where you can put the pole through the neck of the poncho. So I'm actually going to try that. Normally in these lavus, I sleep at the back, but I'm actually going to switch that over today and sleep nearer the entrance. So sort of um, have all my kit stored at the back. So it's easy to get up and, and get out and, and things like that. So yeah, I'm going to fix up this poncho. As you can see, it's a, it's really nice thick fabric, really waterproof. And there's a hole in it, which I'm going to feed the bottom of my, um, poncho uh, top, poncho tent thing, lavu, that's what it's called, uh, through it. So I'm going to take out the bottom rung. So yeah, I've just uh, tilted the pole uh, and I'm just feeding it through the, the neck basically and I'm going to get the poncho nice and up so it's out of the way and then move my pole back to position. Here we have a nice, nice waterproof mat. I can tighten the drawstring, have it nice and tensioned around the pole. And yeah, I'll just uh, flatten out a bit at the back and we'll be good to go. They feel really like, I don't know, just cozy. Even well, though we've like, made a little vintage, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Primal back garden craft village. village. <laughs> <laughs> Need a little sign. It's yeah, like, do. do not enter here. <laughs> no unwanted visitors. <laughs> Bring beer or don't come at all. <laughs> this is romantic, dude. Us sitting across from each other, you know, gazing into each other's eyes. That's it. You got mm. your pipe on the go. Yep. I can recite Tempting poetry. Me in. I can recite poetry to you, mate. <laughs> Well guys, we've got a special sleeping bag today. This is my Rab Neutrino 800. Had this for years and I've only ever used it once. And that was when I went up Snowdon and bivvied at like 800 meters up uh, when the beast from the east hit and we had feels like temperature of minus 15. Um, so that's the only time I've actually used this. Uh, I've been trying to keep it nice for mountaineering trips, that sort of thing and bivvies when it's really cold. But I was in the woods all week last week. It snowed, sleeted. It was freezing cold and I was packing for warmer weather and I just got really chilly. So I'm not getting cold today. I am going to use my my precious, my uh, my special sleeping bag that uh, really just stays uh, un, uncompressed uh, in its lofting bag at home. So it's a shame to waste such a nice sleeping bag just having it staying nice in a box. So let's get it used. Let's get some dirt time on it. Nice bit of fat wood there.
good sandy soil there, very right, tough. Um, yeah, it's perfect. And damp. Yeah, damp sandy <laughs> soil. And we've got the turfs here. And all we're that, only, we can throw keep... over the fire if it gets. That's it, and we're, we're only going to keep it small. Yeah. Because we're here for a night. We're in our booze. Don't need it. No, so exactly. Keep it nice and contained. Yeah. Got probably. loads of fat wood. Yeah, that tree was full of the fat wood. Yeah. Yeah, some nice scrapings. Nice spine on that knife, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, shreds. them for you. Thank you. Thank you. Bearing in mind it rained today and yesterday. Yeah, not bad, that fat wood was yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Good find yeah. on that. It poured this morning, didn't it? It did, it was absolutely hammering it down. Really cosy little like camp spot. Lovely. Mm -hmm. It's just perfect. I'm glad we walked that extra bit. Yeah. Up a hill. Yeah. <laughs> Pine always burns so lovely. Lovely smell. Yeah. Not one to cook on or smoke on. No, but I mean we're just doing a jambalaya so it won't really matter here. It's all pan. Yeah, and to be honest, there's not much hardwood here. There's a few tr spare trees, like there's one behind your shelter. Yeah, that's it. The majority of the wood in this patch is pine. Yeah, it's nice to leave the hard trees kind of on, you know, untouched, isn't it? <laughs> rinse that with a bit of water and swill it through because things on a fire have a tendency of going a little bit quicker so a little bit of water might not be too bad of an idea but we'll see. Smells good chef. Thanks buddy. <laughs> Definitely does. 
So Liam's just put together a little ration for us. He's made a, a chorizo and, and tomato pasta. And yeah, this was supposed to be our lunch, but we actually ended up getting here quite late. Um, so we're gonna have this as a little uh, pre-dinner snack. But yeah, it looks absolutely lovely and it smells great. So thank you, mate. No worries, dude, I'm looking forward to it. Same. It's gonna be good to share. Absolutely. Let's tuck in. Oh yes. So another little bit of kind of forage for freedom, which uh, is all about men's mental health, raising awareness about something, going out and enjoying your local outdoors area. Obviously we forage the pine wood, uh, the pine resin, yep. the fat wood. Tom found that on a really nice fallen bit of log. And while we're out here sharing this warmth of the fire, we thought we'd practice another skill, which isn't foraging, but it's also learning and enabling, which is all part of the movement. So I've got this bit of really nice flint here and we're gonna try and just drive off some nice flakes on that and just practice a little bit of flint napping. It's something we're both quite passionate about, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's something I'm new to, um, something I'm learning. Yep, uh, same, I've, likewise. <laughs> I've ended up with more shards in my hands than I have arrowheads completed, but it's really fun and it's a, it's a skill that I wanna invest time in. Yeah. And uh, linking it to your foraging with freedom, you found that piece of flint. I did. The same with the antler. You made me this lovely soft hammer. Yeah. And uh, like I found out antler out, it's something else to go looking for. Um, antler sheds. Yeah, I found some in my last video where I actually did the forest for freedom. So that was really nice as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, that was just a nice little gift for you to make to kind of help with the, with the craft. Yeah, dude, no, I really appreciate this. So I sent Liam a little video. I made an arrowhead and uh, I was struggling along so I didn't have a soft hammer. <laughs> uh, next thing I knew, Liam had sent me a picture of a soft hammer that he's made. He's wrapped it in leather. It's a really kind gift. Thanks so much, mate. No worries at all, and buddy. It's uh, really ergonomic. I can't wait to smash some you'll rock have to, with it. <laughs> you have to give it a test on that. So um, yeah, for yeah, sure. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. You want to imagine like hitting just where there's like a, a little peak like this, so pick your area. So like if you hit that peak, that's going to drive that. You see the angle that's all you're doing. Yeah. That's going that to carry that angle. Off, so the flatter the angle you put off, the shallower the. Made a circle. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we've just been sat flint napping for a little while. Uh, now, this is a skill I'm really rusty at, so I've been learning a lot from watching Liam. Um, we've got some nice flakes, we've got some nice shards. Uh, the bit of flint was pretty gnarly, to be honest, and uh, yeah, it, it had um, some cracks running through it so the second we hit it it sort of shattered into a million pieces we've worked with what we've got we've made some really basic primitive edges basically by by driving flakes off um, and that's basically what we're practicing these would go great in a flint and steel kit you could use them for skinning you could use them for anything you need a cutting tool for yeah. um, but the bit of flint isn't playing ball enough for us to make a, a nice hand axe or a, um, or a or an arrowhead and for me, my skill level is very much, I'm just hitting bits of flint at this point, and it's just, I need more experience, more exposure yeah. uh, to get better. And, and you don't get better at these things without actually giving it a go. So um, I don't claim to know what I'm doing with this. <laughs> um, to me, I understand wood. I don't really understand flint. So, so watching yeah, Liam is, mystery, is, it? uh, is good. No, it's, it's nice. It's uh, like you said, this, this stone, this flint, wasn't the best bit and it's even beyond my kind of capabilities i get to a bit like this and i think right where do i go from there so it's good to just practice driving flakes like yeah. you said yeah and we've i've certainly got more confident at being positive with my hits yeah yeah in the time through. we've been we've been there because i had the initial like urge to sort of flick it like a badminton squash <laughs> yeah. uh, sort of smash uh, but actually being more positive and following through a bit more has, has definitely helped me drive off some nicer flakes. So hopefully you enjoyed that short clip of this. Um, I really just wanted to show the lovely gift that Liam had gave, had given me. So thank you so much for this, mate. Oh, I'm it's, glad it's, you like it. It's going to a good home and it will it will hope, help me uh, learn this really well, interesting skill. It's definitely served skill. you well here. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, dude. dude. <laughs> 
So we've got onion, we've got some chicken mince. Nice. Got some Cajun jambalaya oh. spices, so going all out. So we'll season up the chicken with the spice. Lovely. And then you go in. Garlic paste. Garlic paste with, so we'll just, we'll fry up this with some chorizo yep. and some Cajun seasoning. Then we'll bash in the onion, onion with the garlic paste. Yeah. And then we will do the rice in there as well as the stock. Nice. And water. Flush. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Nice. Sharp knife. Yeah, boy. <laughs> So we've got some nice oil in there. Tom's cut off this chorizo. Just gonna get that in there. Just to add a little bit more oil to the mix. Spiced oil. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we'll just give them a minute or two just to sweat up. And then we'll go in with the chicken. Uh, I'm just adding this chicken mince which is seasoned with Cajun spice. There's quite a lot of chicken mince in there, but it's gonna be really tasty. Too hungry, boy. Uh, shit on. And now some long grain rice. It's going to be a full billy can, but I think me and Tom had deserved it after today. I think we can manage it. Yeah. Let's try and bury that so I can get more in. That's the good thing about rice, it fills in the gaps. So we got a chicken and chorizo jambalaya. There's some lovely rice in there, some onions, garlic, spices. It's gonna be absolutely lovely. We're gonna chuck it in these wraps and just get it down us. We're pretty hungry. We've recorded Wodesman, gone for a little wander, collected firewood. So yeah, we are ready for a meal and a half. And yeah, this is gonna go down an absolute treat. Oh yeah, buddy. You Should ready? we tuck in? Yeah, dude. Let's do it. Oh. oh. Much, but uh, I can't hunt for it. Do it. Go for it. That's yours, dude. Oh, it's mine. Yeah, it's oh, yours. Oh boy, thank you. No worries. <laughs> there we go, guys. Look at that. Absolutely lovely. Cheers, to there, geese. Cheers, dude. I won't keep you any longer. Yep. <laughs> There's something in that in there. So good. You know what I think really elevates it is the onions. Yeah. Yeah. You know like in a really good hot dog or a really good burger, you can get like the caramelised onions. Same in this. That's got that flavour, hasn't it? Uh-huh. And a little bit of chorizo. Oh, so good. It's probably because it's been cooked over the fire, it's got that flavour. Really smoky ish. Yeah, really good. Well guys, we've had a lovely evening. We're just uh, enjoying the last drop of uh, California IPA by Sierra Nevada. Really nice beer. And yeah, we've just been chatting. We recorded an episode of Wodesman. Liam made a really lovely chicken and chorizo jambalaya, which is really <laughs> warming and uh, really filling as well. Um, like proper big feed. Yeah. <laughs> so much food. Uh, but yeah, it's both sort of put us a bit like in a food coma now, hasn't it? Yeah. So we're both like dreaming of being in our sleeping bags. So I think we're going to probably um, let the fire die down, um, get in our sleeping bags. And yeah, we're going to be packing up 
fairly sharpish in the morning, aren't we? Yeah. Um, because we got another, we got a bit of a drive. Liam's driving, and then um, yeah, we get into a different woods uh, with a special guest. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> this is just going to be a, a breakdown camp, leave no trace kind of thing in the morning. That's it. And then head off to the next, the next adventure. Exactly. Yeah. Different <laughs> video, different adventure. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be nice because we're. Still got you in it, May. Yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> Just change the scenery. It's going to be fun. Awesome. I'm well, sleep well, guys, it. and uh, we'll see you in the morning briefly and, uh, and in the next video, of course. Absolutely. <laughs> Good night. Cheers. <laughs> hey man, hey, man. <laughs> really well Good, man. my thermo rest got a puncture though oh, no. yeah <laughs> oh, that's a disaster bro yeah oh no yeah. it's flat as a pancake flat as a pancake <laughs> Well guys, I actually had a really nice sleep. My sleeping bag was so nice. It literally was like five star luxury quality. <laughs> so soft and warm. And that's even with a issue with my Thermarest. Now I've had this Thermarest ages, it served me really well. Uh, but sadly, I must have put it on something sharp at some point in the last week or so because actually it would not keep air it just is it sprung a leak um, so yeah it, it deflated so obviously I started to get a bit cold from below so I just put my little um, my little hide underneath me and my wool jacket and uh, after I did that I slept absolutely fine even though my thermarest was out of action that so sucks so much it does suck a bit because they're expensive gear um, and uh, yeah, but the thing is, patch kit, put it in the bath, work out where the leak is, put a patch on it, yeah. it'll be good as new. So after Tom mentioned about his thermarest, suddenly had this brainwave that we'd done a bit of flint napping, we found this under Tom's mat. And what it's actually done is hooked through and pierced and made a little hole. So um, just noticed that, which is really lucky. It means we probably don't have to do the whole bath submerging and uh, means we can get a patch repair on there but yeah it's just one to be uh, be careful of especially when flaking off things can go flying a little bit so uh, yeah that is a real shame though but at least we found the hole yeah no good spot mate it's a bit of bad luck but that's what happens we were smashing flint together yeah and we did it near the shelters because obviously we're filming a video and we want it to look aesthetic um. <laughs> yeah no exactly and it is you know, luckily it's only a tiny little tear. This is rip soft material. Yeah. So uh, I've got a patch kit, I think. So yeah. Awesome. We'll we can get that on. In a minute. So it is always worth carrying a little repair kit if you're going to carry a therm rest. They're really strong, but the sort of stuff we're doing with them um, does put them in a, a the sort of compromised position of being around sharp things. Um, so to fix it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe the surface clean with this alcohol swab and then I'm just going to apply this little patch over the top really simple fix um, but yeah it should mean that I have a nice warm thermo rest again to use tonight and at the weekend well guys as you can see I fixed up the thermo rest so I put a gel dot like a glue dot on it and then I put a square patch over the top so if that doesn't hold it nothing will so great minds think alike, uh, Liam and me have just hung our sleeping bags, Liam's there, mine is over there. And you want to just do this just to let the air get to them, if it's uh, not raining obviously, because where the uh, foot can touch the edge of the lava you can get a bit of condensation. 
you got any moisture in your clothing before you get in your bag, you're going to get slightly, uh, slightly moisture, a bit of moisture in, in your sleeping bag. So always good to practice to air them if there's wind and it's not raining. hard to spot I it's mean invisible. it will in a day or two just look like lawn <laughs> yeah that's it just looks like someone sat there had to kick around yeah that's it scuffed the ground a bit so just yeah if you've got grass where you're doing your fire just dig a turf out because it makes leaving no trace so much easier so much easier Well guys, we're all packed away. My Lavu is here, Liam's is where he's standing. Done the fire pit, put the turfs back, made sure it's nice and safe. Yeah. And yeah, beautiful spot for a camp. I love camping in pine woods. It's great. And like the soft ground underneath, it was like being in a field. It was yeah, really it was gorgeous. Comfy. <laughs> Even with your mat going Even down. Even with my mat deflating. It was a good job. But <laughs> yeah, we're, we're actually off to another camp tonight. So yep. we're, we're gonna jump in Liam's truck and, and head up uh, to meet a special guest. So there'll be another video on my channel very soon of that trip. Yeah. Quite nice doing two back-to-back -back overnighters uh, in different spots. It's gonna so, be nice, isn't it? Absolutely. So cheers for having me again, dude. No worries, and, buddy. Uh, yeah, let's awesome. get on the road. Let's do it. <laughs> got there Liam? Just got some Allium Paradoxum or Few Flowered Leek. It's one of the wild garlics over here in the UK. This isn't actually native and it is invasive so don't spread it around but definitely collect it where you do find it. It's got a triangular cross section you can see there. Um, really really nice, makes it quite identifiable and on the leaves it's got that raised keel. Um, this is an absolute monster, look at that, really long. 